our regularly scheduled unfinished business item. Um, and just for those members of the public that are here or, or listening, um, we have an, an item on unfinished business, sort of a global discussion of all things flood related. Um, for, uh, steps town is taking to remediate town damages, obtain town compensation, alleviate and address resident concerns, remediate town infrastructure which worsens flood damages, assist private individuals and nonprofits in remediating damages, obtain compensation for losses to private residences and property. So, um, so one of the things I'd like to note just before anybody wants to talk about that whole Castle of concerns is that at 6:30 p.m. it will be we will be joined by Zoom with an attorney, um, uh, uh, Broder McGann, uh, um, who is uh, going to address the select board and members of the public Seriously. regarding her clients' flood damages and the desire to remedy those damages. So with that, is there anybody that like to, would like to say anything before we start? Public comment? Yeah, public comment. Um, so then, then the all things flood related, I would I would use chair's discretion to move to six thirty for the lawyers after the lawyers' discussion, unless you have something that you'd like to. Talk about before uh, no, I have nothing specific. I don't have anything specific. I'm just kind of here representing people in Baptist Hill. We both have. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're representing the pool. Yes. Yes. Um, so that so we'll go we'll go to new business then. And that is the first item. Michelle Sanger here to discuss the county's pool, and we do have the select board has some information about our attempt to help out. Okay. What we can as well. But, um, That's great. Um, so, one concern is that there are three culverts that go from Wakeley Road down to the pool. They have not been maintained, and so that was. I'm not going to say primarily because it was a lot of water, and it probably all of that water couldn't have been corralled into those culverts, but they were not maintained. Um, and and that, that, that's a serious problem that needs to be addressed. We feel like, and I'm representing the, the pool, that the town put them in, the town should maintain them. There's also this thing, and every time I hear the word or say the word, it kind of makes me laugh, but it's called a swisher. <laughs> and apparently, a culvert goes into a swisher. You look at me. I don't know what it is either. No, that's, but a, it's, that's a licorice company. I, I know. It, I know. I like Swisher licorice. But anyway, apparently it has not been cleaned out. And that, again, in my mind, is a town responsibility since it comes from a town road through pool um, land into a Swisher that needs main, maintenance. When it's not maintained. That's, is that the deep? That's the deep? There's like a deep. No, it's something underground that you and I have never seen. Uh -oh. I, we don't know what it looks like. Um, it's not maintained. So if it's not maintained, it's not working. Um, legally, water is not supposed to, runoff water is not supposed to go into the pool and, as a, legally. And, and, it, and because of this storm, it, it was. We understand that. But if we don't maintain culverts, if we don't clean out, Again, the swisher, then, then it's there's a problem. Yeah. So I guess that's in the flood uh, concerns um, yeah. that we have. Yeah. Um, we have a carve out. We have a swimming pool carve out. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, and then we are also hoping to access some um, some of the funds that may or may not be hopefully may be available, and also CPA funds. So yeah, so this, the CPA, you know that that is not, um, that the first step for that is yes. the CPC committee. Yes. Sure, yes, and but we wanted to bring it to your attention that that's our intention. Yeah, we 100% support that mm -hmm. application okay. and we'll join you in speaking Excellent. on Great. behalf of it and we'll support it at town meeting, which is where it ultimately gets right. voted for. Right, understood, um, understood, thank you. 100%. Yeah. Uh, and 
Um, I, I, we did discuss that already last week, two weeks ago, I think. Okay. That we felt that that was a that we felt that that was a logical place to go to. As long as the pool committee understands the legal requirements. Right, and that, that was. Yes. That there is the whole. Um, and. Uh, we'll read what, it carefully. We'll read it carefully. Yeah, and uh, apparently, uh, there was one. About, about yeah. what, that there may be there's some sort. That there's a concern, at least, that with the word public, and that the pool is not open to general public, it's just public, the, public, the public, public of Conway. Conway. Right, right, um, so. And yeah. so that's, that's, but I, that's not a concern that I particularly share, that would be a CPC committee. Exactly, uh, and we'll, we'll yeah. certainly read the, the application carefully. Um, and past practice, I believe, is that we were in 2012 or 13 granted to CPA money. So yes. past practice yes. says something. You would think. <laughs> it, it didn't for every applicant last year, but okay. maybe, you'll, okay. maybe well, you'll have good luck. That's, um, that's my understanding. Um, so maybe we should just address that. Right now, we, you know, you are probably aware we started a GoFundMe campaign. Yes. It's doing pretty well. It's like at 33000 right now, as of today, which is a third of the way to where we need to get. Um, uh, is, is there really a hard and fast deadline? Yes, there is a deadline. Um, for an emergency yeah. permit, and I was for the permitting from the conservation commission. There's a hard and fast deadline for the work to be done, but, but some of the work can be done in the spring as well. So there's a deadline, and then there's a further deadline. Right? So we need right. more money later. We need a hundred and six thousand. So, so um, we're 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 going to do a um, a fundraising mail campaign this week as well. Um, and um, we're, we're also interested in talking with you guys about uh, trust funds, the trust right. funds money. Right. right, and I did, so I did go to the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, Last Monday? Yeah, with, with the uh, CONCOM and Craig, and Craig Warner, um, just to try to, to try to get the most flexibility out of CONCOM that they were well, and so they did hold off on issuing the 30-day cert until we're so grateful. You, did, yeah, you, had, you had numbers, and I thought that, that was a pretty yeah. big uh, yes. amount of flexibility. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, and then and then we did. I, I went into town hall, met with um, uh, town treasurer uh, about all, and, and we, we all of the town trusts mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, um, much to my dismay, we, we're all, the, the the only the, the amount that uh, of the trusts that are applicable, yeah. mm -hmm. um, the 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 maximum amount that uh, that that they were comfortable with was six thousand mm. dollars. Of the for the four trusts, yeah, uh, for all four trusts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, of and that is, I don't want to get. Uh, Certain spouses uh, upset right, with right. other certain spouses, um, but right. whatever. Uh, but that. Well, that's still a chunk of. I mean, that's, it's 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 something. It's, it's something. And so how how do we go forward then? I mean, so the saying, select yeah. board meets as the board of trustees. I the select see. the select board is the board is, is, the, is the board of trustees for the town trust. I see. Um, and we the, we the, the town treasurer has. Oh, Big voice um, in it because, yeah, sure. yep. um, and, and and so does the town administrator traditionally. Although I'm told that that is not in writing. Um, so how uh, do we? Shall we, shall we write a letter requesting this? Then, no, I mean that request was already been has already been formally made by Craig, and tonight we were going to just um, have a vote, a motion and a vote as the board of trustees, which we're allowed mm -hmm. to do. Okay. Um, so this Craig has a different amount here. So well, it's not name names here, but there was a suggestion of more. Yes, that, I made that suggestion. You made that suggestion. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I was hoping to be able to advocate follow yep. follow uh, mm -hmm. my own suggestion um, mm -hmm. uh, till I was informed that 
if we do that, then others that are dependent on this exact same fund that 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 that, that, the, that one one of the few funds that are directly applicable um, is also the principal scholarship fund. Right. Right. And right. Uh, understood. Uh, understood. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I just. I was kind of a little bit disappointed. So I was told that that's really all we can do. So you all are probably aware of this of this agreement from 2013. Yeah. That was yeah. the grant agreement from the Germany funds for the initial like a big. Yes. So that was a, that was a large. Amount. Right, and that is one of the reasons why this one would be so small because yeah. that was a big chunk of the principal, and that was actually the last time that anybody got principal. that. And yeah, and. Oh. Um, the feeling was that that was yeah. that was that that was a lot, um, and the sad thing is that it's really the same reason that you were eligible for that trust then is the reason that you're eligible for it now, right. um, for, for because the same thing that we pay, that that money paid for is got wrecked again and now needs to be right. redone, right. Right. Um, which is sad. Well, the dam held the repairs. The repairs uh, worked. Right, the dam helped. It did, it did. Um, and, but uh, going there was shock. Going there is just really disturbing. It's yes. just like the amount of damage that that this whole town got wrecked. Yes, <laughs> it got wrecked. We're all very sad. And you know, and and and, and on Friday night, Mima decided that Mima will not even be asking FEMA for to declare a disaster for us. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so that's out of your hands. It is out of our hands. Oh, my God. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll, more, on, more on that later on. Okay, can I just loop back to where we started with, with, in terms of culvert and, and that kind of yes. thing? Would it be feasible for the town to do some of the work that that's required? I mean, some of the work that's required of us that, that should have been that's damaged due to the town, could the town then take care of some of that at a later date outside of the 30-day window? In other words, can they the take like the, culverts. the culverts and yes. the silting pond and the swisher? Yes. Can the town remediate can flood damage on private property? Interesting question, which we will be dealing with later on um, as well. The culverts are um, on the road. Yes, well, but yeah, it, the it comes to our private property. Right, right. So um, that's what that's a big part of what you have to. Yeah, do. I mean, mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, if it were up to me, the answer would be yes. Okay, I just wanted um, to make that clear that it's we're not. Hoping. It's not. You know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. they did not give me dictatorial powers because mm -hmm. um, I would be a benevolent dictator. <laughs> um, but uh, okay, yeah, I just I, I just wanted to make that clear that that is. Um, we could bring down our fundraising um, campaign, the funds we're asking for, if yeah. the town could say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that for you. Just yeah, I mean, and I know this, this came up with the construction of the dam um, when, that, when that was all happening, mm -hmm. because way back in the day, the town equipment did worked on that. Like they built the swimming pool. Yes. Um, in the middle changed. of the night. Then um, times have changed. Yes. Um, and you know, and the fact that apparently one resident complained about that, and that was enough to stop that from happening. I don't know. Well, I, don't know that's I get. I get this. All this stuff. This upsets me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We just wanted to like, make sure. Like, yeah. 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 Like, I, if if there's a way for the town to help the town, which is what the pool is. Um, yes. Like then, uh, you know, whatever. I know this is one of the things that we're awaiting clarification from our own attorney on is what we can do at the pool as well. Since mm -hmm. right. so, should we yeah. keep? Should we be a squeaky wheel? Always. So we should come to continually come to meetings and say how's it going and that kind of thing. It can't. Or, I mean, yeah. we're sad to bug you all. No, no, you know, um, and, and, you know, I do this because I want to help people. Right. And, um, you know, you read, you read Mima's denial letter and they do it because they're looking for reasons not to help people. Um, but the, the uh, uh, but you know, what, what I do know is we got the approval, the, the 
to for six thousand out of the trust for that. Okay. And so um, Okay. Well we appreciate that. What do we have coming in? <laughs> right. That's good. And we'll so, pursue so we can do that right now. We can temporarily adjourn this meeting on motion and then convene as the board of trustees. So mo mo I motion, to motion to temporarily adjourn this meeting for less than five minutes, less than two minutes, really, Depen depending on how the next week goes. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so, so let's reconvene the board of call, trustees. Call to order the board of trustees for the town trust. Um, I move that we appropriate six thousand dollars from the available funds to support um, and the rehabilitation of the common school, and that's the M and M Jermaine. Correct. Correct. And or other funds designated by the town treasurer as a replacement. So the M and M Jermaine fund. I just want to clarify. Jeez, if you don't mean to interrupt, but so that's the one that is specifically about handicap access. Is that correct? Um, can I interrupt for one second? The silver or gray Hyundai Elantra? Yes. It's yours? I can't even open my car door. <laughs> you're so close to me that your mirror, I can't open my door more than this much because of where your mirror is. I just want to make sure that the gentleman is for any kind of access. Yeah, it's the name. Okay, all right. All right, we'll just clarify here. Thank you. All right, so. Um, we didn't get a vote. We, we have still have that have vote. <coughs> Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you all. Um, just talk about yourself. Well, I, I should just mention, um, you know, we have a special town meeting this year, December 9th. Yes. yes. So, you know, yes. it's early to decide. Okay, great. Sure Is this something you would put on the agenda? No, the CPA. The CPC. Oh. The, the CPA funding. Yes. The, yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. The CPC. Um, so so you have to contact them. Yes, yes, yes we will. And then they, they, if they pass it, it gets on, it gets on the warrant. Um, and before it gets on the warrant, the select board votes for it as well. And then in the warrant at town meeting, it'll say. Right, right. We just want to give you a heads up that that's yeah. our intention. Yeah. Okay. We'll be, we'll be doing it. As money comes in, because I think people will, and they very often send it to the town not knowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, well, is there somebody? want me to contact or somebody just want to check like once a week what was it you know it's if money's coming into the town yeah is money being brought to the town for a specific i state? got a letter last uh, no last week that looked like it was probably oh, nice. a donation oh. i was just curious because sure. as this gets out i think people would might start yeah sending stuff a absolutely we have a mailing address of so they, um, but no, but they sent it. Here. You know, it's going to be in my office. I didn't know if I wanted to email somebody and just you know, use their couple. Three o nine Whitley Road. Three o nine. Three o nine Whitley Road. So you want to just email it? No, you, you could, if you're in town, you can just contact you. Well, that, yeah, that's what I was saying. Just, so you want us to yeah. contact you. Okay. Oh, no, so I could just let whoever know. Let somebody know. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna find, I'll call you once a week. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks, Adam. Or, you know, you know whatever is easiest. Sure. Okay. Okay, sorry. All right, so. Okay. Um, the town court now, too. So, um, make a motion. We, we made the motion. We made didn't the get, motion. We didn't get the vote. Second. Okay. Did you have a second? Yeah. Well, no, I made the motion. Yeah. Um, so, all in favor of the six thousand dollars? Aye. Aye. No, it is unanimous. I move to adjourn the meeting of the board of trustees. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Call the meeting of the select board back to order. Thank you. Um, and proceed where we left off. All right. So the the next item was. Um, I knew that was the, the discussion what, what of street lights. Yeah. We're going to we're going to put, even though I really care about that issue. Um, I do too. I we're going to put that off. To, that it's near and dear to Chris's yeah. thing, and so we're going to put that off. Okay. Um, um, and we'll just quickly the, the discussion and the vote to sign the contract with the Festival of the Hills. That is what we do every year. The contract is great. Um, Thank you, Festival of the Hills. We love you. And yes, of course. So I move to approve that and to sign the contract. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then 
the thank you letter to the DIA, to the Department of Transportation. Um, MassDOT is the one and only agency that has helped this town so far with our floods. The only one. Um, and they have really helped. So we're, thank you letter isn't enough. It should be, it should have stickers and gold stars and perfume, everything else. Like they're, they're awesome to us. Um, so I move that we send, that we sign that thank you letter. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. So now we're back to, back to the unfinished business. And um, uh, so, so this can be, a, we're, we're joined now by Lisa Broder McGann, who is, um, do you want to be, acknowledge that you're here? I'm here. Okay. I'm Donna. 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 Um, I'm Phil Cantor. This is Erica Goldman. We're the two representatives from the select board here tonight. Great. Um, and, um, and Lisa, your clients are here. Clients. No, 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 you. Um, uh, More support. Good, good. <laughs> we all need that. Um, and uh, so um, we've, um, Lisa, I'm Phil Cantor. This is Eric Goldman. And um, we read your letter. We read the response from uh, Vincese. So and we were it's asked given to read Vincese's letter into, shall we, we do that, shall we do that? Yeah, all right. So, um, I mean, I guess it's the way, to, a way to start this, discuss, to start your, your presentation off or whatever, but um, been asked by Vincese and Fitzgibbons to read their letter onto the record, into the record, because they can't be here. So, dear members of the board, writing in response to a copy of the letter the select board received, August 22nd from attorney Lisa Broder McGann regarding water runoff affecting 45 Upper Baptist Hill Road owned by Donna Gilman. Unfortunately, we are unable to attend this meeting because of another engagement and request in the interest of equal time that it be read into the record and to provide you with factual information. In this letter, attorney Broder McGann states that the overflow of water to her client's property was caused by a surplus of water that had been diverted from a neighbor's land Patricia Vincese and Dan Fitzgibbons, 96 Upper Baptist Hill Road, onto the road. This divergence, she's quoting from the McGann letter, the McGann letter. This divergence caused a high volume and high velocity of water to travel onto the public paved way. An invest investigation conducted the day after Gilman's basement flooded revealed that the Fitzgibbons changed the flow of surface water from their land and likely the land behind them to divert water from their land to a pipe and onto the street. There's no adequate drainage system at the Fitzgibbons pipe outlet point to either transport or disperse the water. There is no culvert pipe, riprap, or other acceptable structure to transfer the water to the sewer system. Further on page two, paragraph five, in summary, this diverted water constitutes a danger to the Gilman's real property as well as a danger to its personal property and inhabitants. Last, attorney Broder began asking the Fitzgibbons receive permission from the town to create such a diversion, and if so, what the plan was to ensure the surface water drain was not unreasonably diverted onto Gilman's land. And um, so the, the Vintese letter continues. First, we have lived at 96 Upper Baptist Hill Road for 33 years. In that time, the rain event of July 21, 2023 was the heaviest ever. Indeed, the town of Conway witnessed the heaviest monthly rainfall for the month of July in the entire United States, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Most systems could not keep up with the volume and velocity of the July 21 rainfall. As you know, the Conway Fire Department needed to come to the assistance of multiple homeowners. Thank you, Conway Fire Department. Um, that was my editorial comment. We empathize with Ms. Gilman's issues and dozens of other residents similarly affected, but causes of her hardship lie elsewhere. Specific to the allegation made about our property and the alleged diversion of our water, we are most interested to learn what constituted the investigation of the water because none of it is surface water from our property. Running the length of our property, Hardings, and the former Alice Acres property, there is a drainage ditch. This ditch carries runoff from a spring on the high ridge that runs behind the parcels. This ditch was there before we moved in and has likely been part of the landscape for many decades. The pipe in question, which channels water from that ditch, was installed when our leach field was replaced in 2004. 
The pipe was proposed by the engineer in order to shield the natural runoff from the septic system and ensure the integrity of the leach field. Our fully permitted system was completed in 2005. Tax, you will find copies of the disposal construction permit and certificate of compliance signed by the Conway Board of Health. In addition, the PERC test conducted in 2004, which we can also provide a copy, indicates minimal surface water on our property. The drain across from Ms. Gilman's home was installed by the Conway, town of Conway several years after our septic leaching field was installed. In summary, there is one, no surface water on our property that is going into the drainage ditch. Two, there is categorically no divergence of water on our property into the ditch. Three, the source of the water in the ditch is from runoff from the spring on the ridge. Four, any and all activity on our property since 1990 has been fully permitted and in accordance with state and municipal laws and bylaws. We were dismayed to re receive this letter when a simple conversation with Ms. Gilman could have saved everyone some time is an understatement. We do not dispute that Ms. Gilman has a water issue. The residence on 45 Upper Baptist Hill Road sits well below street level. Previous residents there have also made drainage improvements to mitigate rain that overwhelmed the town's limited stormwater management infrastructure. This rainy year has created problems for many residents and devastated our roadways. Regrettably, even a cursory review of the water flow in the ditch would, have, would quickly have demonstrated that the water flow was coming far back from the forest line by the ridge. It is incredulous to contend one property could generate an amount of water that ameliorated asphalt and required the pumping out of a basement. We will not be scapegoats for the reckless and unfounded assertions made in Ms. Gilman's letter and will take any necessary legal action to refute her erroneous assertions. One of us was a municipal official for almost four decades. The implication that any action was taken illegally or not in accordance with proper procedures it is, is an accusation that will not go unchecked. Thank you for your time and attention, Daniel Fitzgibbons and Patricia Benjaisi. And there's several, uh, several attachments, for certificates of compliance from the Board of Health and a disposal system construction permit from the Board of Health, both from the year 2004. Um, so I've done my task, I've read that letter. Now it's up to you, Lisa. Thank you. So, <clears throat> first of all, it would have been helpful for them to send me the letter. Um, so I haven't seen it, nor can I absorb it. So I'd like to start at a different place. Um, I, I just patched in the meeting at 620, so I'm not sure if you all um, read my letter or if you yes. if you kind of presented the issue um, already. We so can. as you as you know in the letter, which I, you all have read, essentially there's two issues um one is the surface water that we believe is being contributed by neighbors that are up the hill but then regular old groundwater and now i hear there may be spring water which is not surface water but another type of water um, what i'm talking about in that letter is i want to make it clear is what we call equitable relief you know speaking as a lawyer there's two types of claims, one where we're suing for damages and we're saying you did something wrong, give us money. That letter is about equity. It's about trying to prevent the harm that is continuing to occur to Donna's home, to try to prevent future harm to, to their well-being as well as to public property, and candidly to try to prevent harm to what I think are abutters and other people that are downhill. Um, what we laid out in the letter, and this was not sent willy-nilly, if you will, it consulted a actual very well-known engineer that designs municipal systems for rainwater and stormwater, etc. Showed him relevant pictures, and I will share with you what the extent of the investigation was at this point, which obviously is not complete because I did not go on private landowner's property, but I showed him what investigation I did do, and we can say unequivocally that the water that was witnessed the day after this main storm, this very big storm, was a ongoing river of water that would not have been in existence if it was just groundwater from one abutting neighbor. It was a flow of water that was ongoing for almost two days that I was there. And the volume of it is such that it had to have become has to come from a, a large area of land. And I just you know listened to the assertions of the the neighbor 
but I can say I saw with my own eyes the water that is flowing that goes down the street, crosses the land, and goes on to Donna Gilman's property. And that's not what we call in the lawyer world a natural occurrence of water. It is an unnatural occurrence of water. Um, let me just step back a second. I know that, first of all, the tone that we were trying to set with this letter is to appreciate that Conway has been through devastating damage. And we can appreciate that other neighbors have had water damage as well. But what we're trying to say is there's some certain regulations and common standards that we do not believe that are met that are causing property harm. And we're hoping to, in, in conjunction with the town to you know find the source of the problem and ameliorate it, like fix it. Um, I had a brief conversation with the chair about the source of like relevant regulations and I can share some of them with you, but I can promise you when I start spouting these numbers off, your eyes are gonna glaze over because it's not just state regulations regarding the discharge of groundwater. There's also federal regulations that kind of interplay with it. And there's also regulations that require property owners not just to get permission from the town, but to get permission from the DEP if they're discharging any kind of quote pollutants and pollutants are just are defined as groundwater if they're discharging any pollutants onto private property that ends up in on public property and or private property it's called an ms4 it's a permit they're supposed to get i guarantee you they don't have it they haven't even mentioned it in that letter so i can promise you yes maybe they have a a, a permit from the town for their septic systems that's not what we're talking about we're talking about a large volume of water coming from a pipe. I don't know whose pipe it is. I can only see from my eyes that it's approximate to their property and dumping onto a public way with no simple engineering plans to accommodate it and or transport it. Um, I'm gonna step back a second and talk about a regulation. Multiple regulations require that the town have permission from landowners and have a plan for discharge of surface water. And there's entire, entire um, guidelines and even handbooks on the Mass DOT site on the surface water regulations. In fact, there's even grants for towns to comply with these surface water regulations because when they created them, they knew that it was gonna be a burden on towns to try to keep up with them. So the regulations that I'm talking about are specifically, again, the federal and state, I'm just gonna give you a few of these, but I would prefer to email the board so that you have them and I'm not just a talking head. The main ones are under the, it's called NPDES, stands for um, National Pollutants. That the, the forms relevant to that are about groundwater, some of the ones that are relevant, I think it's called the MP4, which is permitting for groundwater discharge. The event that we have here is what we call an IDDE, it's an illicit discharge. Um, that's what it's known under both the federal and state regulations. It's an illicit discharge of pollutants onto um, municipal land and or private properties. And the considerations, you know, these regulations were created primarily because we know that groundwater has pollutants in them. And with the, the transport of such water, the pollutants are also transferred. And it's also important to note, and um, I'm sure the Board of Health would be concerned as well, that the, these homes, including Ms. Gilman's, has private sourced water. They have a... a um, What's the word I'm looking for? It's not it's not town water. They have well, her own water comes from her land, which is being essentially polluted by this deluge. Um, the a little bit of factual. I guess I, I didn't put it in the letter and I want to kind of say it now. This event was traumatizing. Um, I can tell you that the water didn't didn't just enter her home and her basement. I'm talking about four feet of water that came out the back window of the basement window. She had to be pumped out more than two times. It 
carried all these contaminants and pieces of the road onto her property. And but for the amazing community that Conway is, and people showed up and helped her remove this from her property, her po her property would have been filled with pieces of the roadway, other debris, etc. And you know, this event didn't just cause property damage, which I'm not going to get into right now, but it's truly a risk for the future for the value of this property, and candidly, is causing severe distress. And, I, and I'm sure people who have been flooded can, can talk to the kind of PTSD that you all have when you see a rain cloud. You know, my client's afraid to leave her home when it rains because, candidly, we attempt to hire somebody to prevent this issue, and it, we have been told by two different sources, we cannot fix this on our own. It, it's not possible to protect my client's land on her home. Uh, on her own and, and I don't remember if I put it in the letter I mean she bought sandbags and other pieces of devices etc cetera, etc cetera. but it, it's not going to stop the water that's coming it looked like a river that was flowing onto her land and it's not coming just from groundwater across the street it's coming from a collection of water that I, I almost suspect maybe a, I'm hearing in the in the neighbor's letter that there is a, a spring I mean I wonder if somebody's tapped into that and that's what's flowing. The other piece that's relevant for you all, and I'm just going to maybe just ask you if you have questions, is that there, it appears to me, and, and also from my engineer and as well as people who did the remediation that came to the land, um, that the sewer is emptying into my client's backyard through an underground system that is not, there's no easement for it, there's no permit as near as we can tell for it, and that's contributing towards the the damage to the property. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that you all are familiar with the concept of easement if you're using a private person's land for the purposes of diverting water or transferring water that you need to get an easement for and pay valid consideration for it. That's a Massachusetts, in fact, a, a federal common law standard principle that has been in existence from at least 1914. So why don't I pause because I'd rather hear um, what you all are thinking and see if I can answer specific questions that I didn't cover. The only thing I would say is that I think there needs to be a lot of research done onto all of the different pipes that are coming off the road. If we can find any information about when they were installed, um, if there are any easements somewhere in some documentation somewhere, I just think there needs to be a lot of research. And actually, um, in speaking with town council, that was her thought as well is that we really need to know more about what's going on up there in terms of the pipes that are on private property that are coming from the road. Yeah, do we have a map of that anywhere? Because you said there's a sewer pipe that's, I mean, right. Yeah, yeah, storm we, storm don't, yeah we don't have so any sewer. That yeah, exactly. right. yeah, it's a storm drain. I know it's a storm yeah. drain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, is there anywhere, does that exist, a map of the storm drains in town? Not that I know of. I know that when um, DOT was speaking with you, Phil, they were, they were planning to look in their offices across the state to see if they could find any designs for that area. We haven't heard back yet, but it's been vacation time, so that's, I'm sure, why. And the fellow that made yeah. the promise broke his back. And the, Yeah, yeah. so um, they've had delays. But, but that seems to be what really needs to happen to get to the bottom of it. But regardless, you know, I, I think we also talked about doing um, dye tests that DOT could provide us some dye that would go through the water so we could see where it's starting and where it's ending and that that could be helpful too. Um, and I think there's been a lot of confusion. I'm just learning so much myself, but if the pipe is on private property, you know, the town, and there's no easement, then the town doesn't have permission to go and maintain that pipe. So, you know, there, I think it, it feels to me like a lot of things kind of got cobbled together over the years and just kind of didn't get maintained or nobody knew who was supposed to maintain them. I, I don't know. But I think we need some engineering answers. 
Yeah, I think can, clearly... can I can I say a few things in response to a couple sure. of those comments because maybe maybe it will help. So um, for sure, there needs to be an investigation as to the 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 pipe that goes and it's dumped onto the to the road. Like there's no question about it. This pipe is dumped onto the road. All right. So where is that water coming from? That the water is. Uh, dumping onto the road. That's investigation number one that I would not have the authority to do, go on private landowner, barring bringing a claim and asking them to produce information as to where it's coming from. So that's number one. Number two, that water, no doubt, I watched it with my eyes, travels down the hill and it goes into a sewer drain. Okay, you can see it traveling, the velocity of the travel or the water traveling. That water then goes under the ground across the street it ends up in a pipe that's dumping out on the side lot. I can tell you with certainty, in Massachusetts, easements have to be recorded in a deed. There's no deeded easement on Donna Gilman's land for that right. That's the first part of the story. You can research other deeds, but I know there's no deeded right. It's called running with the land for the water to dump under the ground into Donna's side yard. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the sewer drain is not adequate, whether it be blocked, etc. I don't know, but it is not adequate to take the volume and velocity of the water that's coming down the street together with the debris is coming with it, which is literally coming across the street down into Donna's basement. And, and the adequacy of the system is required by both federal and state law as well as maintenance of the, you know, you talk about where's the maps for the sewer systems. Well, this NEP, NPDES requires municipalities to maintain kind of the accurate maps and reassess it to make sure it's accurate. And it is a burden. I'm not pretending it's not, but it's something that I really believe it would be in everybody's best interest that this board deal with now and, and try to fix because I'm telling you, all these landowners that are proximate to Donna have a very serious property valuation issue, and we have serious health issue. I mean, water, this water didn't just happen during a storm. It's ongoing. We only figured out that it's been kind of the source of the problem when I went up there. I mean, I, it's not something I would go investigating. Donna Gilman is a good friend of mine. I happen to be a lawyer that's done municipal work of this kind for 30 something years. So I knew what I was looking for, but, but for that, you wouldn't have figured this out. Well, we know what, we know what part of the problem is now that's impacting a lot of people. Let's try to fix it. But I, I mean, it's not just Donna's property. I mean, I, that, that, that's like there's, storm drains all over town that I think are in the same situation, like whether they're maintained or whether we just, like, we don't know who put them in. I mean, like you said, it's like, this is this is a town that's, all of this stuff has been cobbled together over the past many years. Um, and I, you know, up until July, I think we've done a, you know, decent job of kind of keeping everything together. But this is, I mean, for me, this raises the question of like, you know, do we need to plan for these, you know, 10 year floods that used to be 100 year floods. And if so, how do we do that in a way that the town can afford? Because already we're, you know, as Phil said, our, you know, our our school budget is, our non-school budget is two and a half million dollars. And the cost of this, the cost of July alone is well over two and a half million dollars, you know? So if, 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 if we look at like, you know, the, our MVP grants, I mean, is, is there are, are there ways that we can you know, have outside sources come in and fund this kind of environmental study or this engineering that doesn't, not just for, you know, the Gilmer property, but for like other parts of town, other roads that have been, you know, like where people have complained, like, well, no one maintained that culvert or we didn't know that culvert was there or it's not big enough, you know? I mean, how do we, how do we do this? How do we pay for this engineering that clearly I feel like we need to do in the town? Well, we have put it forth with, um, the emergency wetland program. Um, State or federal? Well, it is federal. USDA okay. through NRCS. Yeah, so we have approached them and there's three different properties or places in town we've asked that they look at and their engineers should be back this week 
One was Fields Hill, one was Shelburne Falls Road, and then the, the other one is this whole big drainage issue. Yeah, but, but yeah, then that, so I, and I did, I took them up there, and you know, I, I, w without really specifically addressing this matter, the, the upper 45 Upper Baptist Hill Road matter, I, I'm, I've repeatedly said in public at previous meetings that I want to see sort of a global solution for the Pine Hill, Upper Baptist Hill Road, River Street slope, because that was the loci, the focus of damage, the worst residential damages in town, and um, not just Ms. Gilman, um, but you know, many, many others. To, you know, that that's where all the boilers were lost. That's where the water. That's where the electric panels were lost. That's where that's where people have suffered significant financial damages um, and and uh, I, th that so solving so solving it's solving one property is one thing but there there's so many others that are in the same boat and it's that the the solution that as I understand when when I met with the EWP people although that was not an engineer um, um, but she, she was like we do this what we do is would would help because they're all about the swales and the big zigzag constructions and and all that. They're not about the storm drains, um, but the, but uh, you know they, with their whole thing is slowing the water down and letting it meander and um, you know and and those of us. Well, having yeah, I'm sorry. Having a source like you know the 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 concept of zigzagging water and riprap and stuff like that. Um, having a source for that water to go to as you after you slow it down, it I, I'm sure they can help with, and I'm, I, I think the DEP even because that 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 permitting process that I'm that I'm talking about is required by the DEP as well as the EPA, and they have resources for municipalities to comply with it, and I wonder if they have somebody too that can assist the town with this issue. I would definitely go. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't know that. There's a resource guide on that Mass DOT site. There's a resource guide for municipalities, and one of the things you all can do right now, right? And don't mean to get preachy, but there's there's a, a public flyer out there. I honestly believe that the, the 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 manner with which private people are dumping water onto the roadways that are not designed to accept it is contributing to the problem and there's a, a pamphlet you all can print out right now and disseminate to to community members that can help reduce this problem it's right on the dot site to strike that i mean epa site for mass.gov dp yeah, yeah are you talking about the combined sewer water overflow project no. I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh, um, you okay. cut out. I, I wasn't sure if you were talking to me or if you were just talking. Yeah, no, I was just curious if that was the program you're talking about because we don't have a combined sewer um, overflow because we don't have a sewer system here. So I just, but I will definitely investigate with the folks at DEP and see if they can be of any help as well. But the long and the short of it, I think, is I, we need engineering, we need help with engineering. And also figuring out what's where the water is actually traveling, I, I would think would be the first step, or how it's you know, what the path is it's taking. What does a solution look like? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then how can we move towards that? Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, for me, like also, what are the resources required for maintenance? Because I keep hearing that like the culverts haven't been cleaned out. No one's taking care of the culverts. They're too small. I mean. What like do we have a maintenance program for our storm culverts that people have said like no one's you know looked at them in however many years like is that I mean obviously that's a town responsibility but like how do we if, if it's not being done and <laughs> it's not being done because we just don't have the resources to do that then how do we allocate the resources to make sure that like every culvert is you know cleaned up before every storm or we just know like which one's most likely to fail or which one yeah. needs most attention. I do, I do know that 
in anticipation of these events, Ron had been cleaning them out, but the, the amount of water and debris that came down just clogged them back up immediately. There was nothing really that could be done. <laughs> so, you know, um, in terms of the culverts. But I think we need to get to the heart of the issue with, and, and I could be wrong, this is what I sort of feel like I've heard, is that, that way back in the 1800s, the system was set up with the pipes going onto private property. And I don't know, maybe you could answer it, whether or not easements were even part of the deal back then when somebody was diverting water onto private property. And it, it kind of feels like the situation yeah. came up. So, I, you know. There's a case, there's a case from 1914 that uh, a town, I think it was North Attleboro, got sued because the town was diverting water onto private property without an easement. And then, again, that was 1914. So, you know, maybe maybe you predate that. I don't have off the top of my head a case prior to 1914, but it's been a long-standing sentiment that, you know, it's called a common enemy. This water, water is considered a common enemy. I mean, it's everybody's problem, but you can't you can't take water from um, a bunch of other people, dump it onto public land, and then allow it to, to divert into private homes. It just can't. And I can tell you, while I can, I, I don't know, I can't appreciate who else's basements were flooded and if it was proximate to this hill, but I can promise you that the water that was coming off of that pipe directly onto your road, it's not normal water. And I do suspect that, that it may be tapped into a spring or something. And again, you want, you want to solve, a, solve something now, let's go look at that. And, and I can't do it as quick as you all can and I really think that, that it, it, it's eroding the road. You know, you have a right to find out where the water is coming from. And I, again, I'm, I'm trying to do this in a way that causes the least amount of disruption for Conway at the direction of Donna, because this is her home. You know, this is her community and Conway is a magical place. And, and we're really truly hoping that we can figure out something that is least disruptive, but also protective and quicker as we quick as we possibly can yeah. well hopefully the dye tests too would help with that if, you know can, can i i'm gonna butter to donna and our property floods regularly as well and um but it doesn't flood in the house regularly though in this period it did i think that there are several other considerations that have to be considered here and that includes um, where the table water is sitting, what the rate of the water flow coming from the sky is, and its pace, all of which have changed quite dramatically. And that as, as the knit, and um, uh, that I'm not, there is a, and I think it's important here in rural communities to use the word storm drain and not sewers. Sewers imply a design system and the storm drains are far more ad hoc in general. Everybody here is on artesian water or, su or shallow wells. I remember when I moved in, Donna's house was on a shallow well that was related to my property. Um, but so is the gully that goes down um, between all of our houses down towards River Street. And that the water management issue is an ecological civil engineering problem that is not just this town, but all throughout this region and in southern Vermont, as all through Vermont as well. And um, even the, the, it's important to recognize that even the flood mitigation plan reports are operating on a 1930s model of water flow. So the water flow has changed and it's not going back to what it used to be. So one of the things that I think would be really important to do is to identify the priority areas that absolutely need to be identified for location of where are the culverts. There are culverts on the road that aren't even open because there's a culvert in our property that is an outflow culvert, and goodness knows where the inflow to that culvert is. Nobody going back two generations of highway uh, department knows where the inflow is. So it's not a deliberate, vicious 
uh, uh, intentional problem, it's a long-standing one in a different ecological environment. And, um, and the, the, um, the ways that things are defined are, are dependent on the past. We had a monsoon season. It's not the first one that we've had in Conway. We've had, you know, they happen for about a month long, and in those periods, the water table rises very, very high. Um, the ground on the upper part of Baptist Hill, the entire uh, area up there that where Donna's house is located is a seaplane that has clay 18 inches below the surface, 12 to 18 inches below the surface. According to a report that was done by the Conway Landscape School of Design in the early 1970s. But according to a report recently done in Deerfield, the groundwater table of this entire region has climbed by almost 10 to 12 inches in the valley. I don't know what, up, what it's done up here because those studies haven't been done, but I can tell you based on my dirt floor basement and field stone walls that it's come up because you can, you can see the, where the dampness has changed. So I think that a collective solution is absolutely required, but that it's not just uh, storm water, there's table, there's all different kinds of water involved. And um, there's never been coordination across all the houses and the permitting and where the pipe's going. And that since the storm, the drainage on Upper Baptist Hill has been entirely changed because of additional new drainage work that's been done. So you can't even go by what happened at that storm for what the future will be. But I think that beginning to map that out is a, an urgent issue, one that's high priority and one that's an economic argument to the region because the areas, landscape, recreational resources, if they're open to the public, if they're open to the public, that's going to be an issue. Um, and it's, land, it's landscape and physical building heritage is what makes people come here. I don't think it's a magical place. I'll disagree with you, it's a magical place. <laughs> Well, let's keep the magic alive. But it's the, it's, the landscape, <laughs> it's the landscape and natural heritage that helps with the The landscape and natural heritage are the economic value of the area. Yeah. And, if we just, and if it's allowed to be, to crumble, it, and not, and it's a complex argument that needs to be made, but it, it's one that, um, there are many different users of the Upper Baptist Pine Hill area that didn't used to use it having lived there for almost 40 years. You didn't used to see bicyclists, you know, on any number of contests or fundraisers going through gravel roads. You do now all the time. Same thing with runners, <coughs> long distance uh, running, all those kinds of things. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I agree. I, I think it's not, um, I think it's larger just than whatever you know, the Chaseys did, putting in a, you know, doing their septic system in 2004, which was fully permitted and everything was done above, above the board. I mean, I think this is really just a situation that we couldn't have, we couldn't have anticipated, and now we can. <laughs> and so the question is, you know, what do we do going forward and how do we figure out how to pay for the engineering to ensure that, you know, the town center, and not just the town center, but, you know, like Field Hill Road or like all the other roads in town that, you know, that this continues to be a viable. I mean, I think you really need a plan where you identify where the, um, where, the where, priorities the, where are. are the priorities, even yeah. if they have to be phased, what are the priorities, what is the phased timeline to evaluate it for, where at the what where the short term help lies, 
where the long-term help lies. Um, you know, another example of why it's definitely not just um, one property is if you look at the tree level destruction that's related to the increase in the volume of water, my property is a great example of that given the volume of trees I've taken out over the years and will continue to have to take out. It's above a dozen. So, Mr. Chair, may I be heard? Yes, ma'am, of course. Thank you. Um, I'm having a hard time hearing you, so can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. I'll speak louder. It's, it's the owl. Oh, okay. It's the owl. So um, I'd like to propose that you start with the people who had to get their, you know, four feet of water pumped out of their basement as the hot zone, <laughs> you know, it, it, as far as practical. And I don't know how many people that is that are that were involved in that, but, but it truly it, it's a serious, serious problem. And that's where I would suggest that you all start. Um, I would also, and this may be premature and I may regret saying this, but um, my engineer Gary Swanson, he, you know, he, he cut his teeth on small town people. I'm, I'm from Southampton. I was on the Board of Health in Southampton many years. He's, he, he was our engineer, could do it in an economical way. He is my consultant. And to the extent that we can play let's make a deal and fashion some kind of agreed upon remedy then he could probably work for you all cheaper than you could find anybody else because he's used to working for small towns and used to creating solutions for these uh, on a budget. So I'd, I'd like you all to chew on that when you get to deliberate um, because we would like to be part of the, of the solution and I do think he could be of assistance. Um, yeah, we, we know we need, we know we need, uh, you know, the, the I, I don't know what, what your level, Bernie, is of comfort is that EWP is going to come riding to the rescue. I, uh, I'm, I'm just sort of down on all levels of government <laughs> these days, just because just we've just gotten, they've don't just stuck, to from DOT. except for Mass DOT, every other, every other state and federal agency has just stuck it to us, for real. And, um, well, I mean, we do have... You know, those in a personal way. No, no, but it sure feels that way, you know, and I mean, I So, do you have a, I think that it would be really, really worthwhile to research the, the ways that um, environmental engineering, go to the uh, University of Massachusetts Extension Service office, they have a program for land management and storm management, water resources and ask for that help to link the, re link the town to both the, um, as an assistance package, both where are the pots of dollars, not by one person just poking around, but by somebody who knows where the pots of dollars are and threaded together for the first step, which is both figuring out where are the priority areas and what is the environmental engineering assessment required from the town to know, and what documents and what, what weather soil related information needs to be known in order to improve stormwater management. I mean, it's like, uh, there's tons of, I know that's what you guys have been doing, but, but I would think that there has to be some coordinated effort and coordinated knowledge for this because it's covered a lot in, in the Vermont press. It's covered a great deal since uh, I mean. Well, to, to answer, I am, I am hoping, since we now have requests into two different agencies for help with engineering in that specific area, and I'm assuming these are the experts because this is what they do. So I, I'm hoping that they will get back to us and at least let us know whether they will help us, and then if not, then we can I know, wouldn't wait. More. I would I would wait for them to get back to you, but I would call the University of Massachusetts mm -hmm. Extension Service to see where within that apparatus and or conservation and recreation, where in their apparatus lie or you know, however you find out where are which agencies address these issues in small and large volume. I mean, it, 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 there's got to be um, a knowledge base 
resource that isn't that can function as a navigator, just like there are for healthcare. Um, as a additional, Mr. Chair, as an additional resource, there's a municipal storm and regional review of Northeast Massachusetts that also did reviews that have that had people affiliated with that. Again, I can send you that link. You know, maybe you want to steal somebody from there to to again. It's stormwater management. It's the entire Northeast was reviewed recently. So, to the extent that you're looking for names for that, um, that resource is available. But what you what you all can do, and I, I just want to say this in closing, from what I have to say, is two things. Any engineer is going to need maps of your stormwater system. You absolutely have to prioritize getting whatever you can for those, you know, what we call as-built maps. Like, where are the sewer systems? When were they stalled? Where do they where do they outpour? The engineer is going to need that. And if you all can't identify that, then then you're looking at recreating your town before they can do anything. So that's something that you, you absolutely can get a head start on. And then the second thing, I already said this, but I'm going to repeat it, investigating the source of that water that's coming from that uphill neighbor, because I'm, I'm telling you, it's not, na it's not a natural accumulation, and it's the source of the problem for those downhill neighbors right now. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 there's so much water that was coming down that hill. I mean, just, I'll never forget looking out and just seeing it. It looked like ocean waves. It was cresting. It was cr it looked like you're just expecting to see people surfing it. Um, well, four, four, four foot, four foot pumping out. Ah, you're lucky. Some of us had double that of height in the basement. But you're not. Well, when I bought my house, it came with deeded rights yeah, to true. a spring up the hill, which used to feed, that's how, like, the house got water in the 1800s, and it's, it just flows right through. I mean, it's just a river in our basement constantly, but it was a, it was a really big river that weekend, that last storm. Yeah, I have, I have pipes that cross my land, they come out. To where they're visible at the where, where a stream goes underground nobody knows where the pipe comes from and nobody knows where the pipe goes to you can just see it for a two-foot section and all we know is it's blocked um it's a big pipe it's old um, the stream that goes behind on river street is fed by all of the flood waters coming down that hill and uh, that took out two basements with you know, full on loss of boilers, water heaters, three. electric, and three, yeah, one for a little bit for two houses further up, and gave me uh, a panic. Yeah, I mean, it, it's we 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 know we know the residences that in that neighborhood that have suffered the worst. I would just you know, and and that and that really really are suffering like now every time it rains and everything, and that, that there is there is like. If it were up to me, that's who would be. That, 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 that's that's where you really need an engineering solution. Well, and then we, we do. We, we to both of, to both of your points. I guess what I would say is maybe in a way it's a moot point about those pre-existing pipes, and maybe what we need is engineering to come in and just say this is how we direct the water now. Right. Well, you also have you know? to know where the water is coming. I mean, it's an ecological engineering right. problem. You have to right. know where the water is moving. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, and like I said, it's already changed. Yeah, it's already the, changed. I think what Bernie is saying, though, is that maybe you don't try to figure out what's there and, and broken, but just figure out what's the correct solution. Right. Right. Give exactly yeah. where the water is going now. Yeah. Where do we want it? In other words, we want to get it solved quickly. So let's come up with the best engineering solution to get it solved quickly. And there are there. And I also think that the the landowner versus the private land versus public land is in some ways a fall. Like I understand that there's all kinds of regulation and easement rights in everybody's deed. I think everybody's deed up on the hill has various kinds of rules about uh, water when everybody had a shallow well. And, um, but I think that there are, 
obvious, easy things to do, and that several pots of the money involve landowner and town partnerships. Mm -hmm. And to assume that that is not plausible is to defeat yourself from the beginning, because it requires that, that relationship to, to be achieved. No, 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 nobody's, nobody's saying it's not possible. Saying, yeah, it's, 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 it's possible, it's possible, it's very possible. It comes no, 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 you can't do that because ownership. that's private ownership. That, you hear that, oh, you can't do that because that's private property. That, what I'm saying is that if with discussion and understanding of what can happen, that it, you have to approach it like a more open-ended dialogue than the assumption of, oh, it's private property, or we can't do anything. Know, we can't yeah. do anything. But I don't think anyone here at this table is. No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that in general, that that's a, a, a really important. Everybody welcome the town. That's why Conway is a magical place, because that's not the approach we take. <laughs> right. No, I, 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 pro prior to the requires some serious civil engineering. <laughs> <laughs> and civil discussion. Yes. No, that's and, very yeah, and civil discussion. Yeah. I think prior to this meeting, Ms. Gilman and one other resident are the are the only two homes in that whole slope that I haven't talked to about a desire. You know, do you have a desire to participate in a community wide fix of this? And mm -hmm. you know, will you will you cooperate with whatever permissions need to be gotten? Um, and everybody was very enthusiastic about it, and would imagine. You would be too, um, and uh, you know, so I, I, uh, I, I know that the one program, the EWP program, is is they call themselves a public-private partnership, and they wanted the town to mm -hmm. recommend the project, which, which is what we did, um, and they specifically say that they can go on private, they function on private property, um, and do. I think um, I keep th saying that we got enough irons in the fire. Sooner or later, maybe something's going to have to break for us. But well, I definitely have an another nice long list of things to do this week from this discussion. So. Um, but, but this Pine, the Pine Hill Slope is what I call it, <laughs> and it's a problem. It's been a problem. It's a it's, ridge problem. It's the a ridge. whole ridge. It's a ridge problem. The whole ridge has a problem. Yep. <laughs> the whole ridge well, sheds the, water. The whole the ridge sheds. sheds water. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it sheds ro water that would make Noah from the Old Testament uncomfortable. I mean, it's it's just. Well, that's got to do with the volume of rain. Yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a volume of rain issue. Even that. Even that, just the amount, the amount of water that we had was just seemed excessive, even compared to everyone else in town. And we were in a super sad. Yeah, it didn't seem very super. So I, I would disagree with that. The water was flowing like a river, you know, two days after the storm ended. So I would agree with the chairman. That's not a normal amount of water. It's not. It wasn't a it normal wasn't a water. water. It was the most water in North America. <laughs> but it wasn't flowing. It wasn't flowing anywhere else up or uh, down the no, street. No, it was no, dry no. here, dry there. We're talking about it coming was, out of that pipe down the street and this stretch of land into the. I watched it. I have video of it. The, the land was dry up at the top of the hill. It was dry at the bottom of the hill. We got this middle of this hill where the water is running crosses the street and goes on Gilman's land, probably down the slope to other landowners. That's not normal. Yeah, there was no probably there, that last little bit. It yeah, was, it definitely That, that was like 100% definitely. And um, I could introduce you to those landowners. You're looking at those landowners. Yeah, we are the landowners. Yes. We all flooded. Yeah, <laughs> like all of us really badly. And some of us, for the first time in the 40 years we've lived here, at that level. Right, but I, I think it's important to note that Donna's land has been wet for some time. I think that it's 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 not just this, this horrific storm, this once in a lifetime storm. I, I think that there's been ongoing water issues there, I suspect for longer than we've identified. 
So can I ask the process for this board? Um, I, I, we're, 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 uh, the, the process would be to identify the next step. Uh, and you know, we, we, we know that the solution, that, that we need engineering assistance. The only, that DOT said that they were taking initiative, that they agreed to do the initial research and, um, you know, the, the only, the, the, the reason that the DOT is even, contem is, is, has, they had say, stated that they were going to research, that they were going to engineer a solution for the amount of water that was coming out onto their roadway. Mm -hmm. 116. And 116. Yeah. And when I first contacted the DOT and got the, the, the regional engineer to come out, that was the morning of the 21st that he came out. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, we, we're not going to be able to help you. All we can do is... All we can do is remedy the water that's on our road. Well, three hours later, the water that was on that road um, had shut down traffic and you couldn't, it, it, um, I mean, the shut, they needed the Forest Service truck with the four foot tires to be able to use that road. Um, and, uh, and after seeing a few videos, they came out the next day with all of the engineers that, that work on these issues, including the chief engineer from Boston, um, and said they are going to they are going to look into they they have to solve that problem. They can't have that much water on their rig. They saw that it all came from the stream, um, w w the immediate look from the stream behind the three houses, the, the post office, and the three houses in the under River Street, which all comes from Pine Hill. Which all comes. So is there a possibility uh, that, and, that that we can and, and that you know and. When, and, that, and that's what I and I was talking about them like look that's that's not the problem the problem is the whole thing it's you know the water comes to that stream from somewhere like you um, and they were they were talking about you know they were talking about oh well, we can engineer a place for all that water to go to and we don't really need to worry too much about where it all comes from but um, I think that they're going to find that that's not feasible did they give you a timeline? Yeah, so they, they so they 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 suspected it would take the remainder of this year just to do the research. And are they um, actively engaged? Or are we? I mean, who's? And my sense is that because it's the end of the summer, a lot of people were on vacation. Because I know that was true for excuse me for EWP. Um, I'd like to make a suggestion, if if that's okay. What if we were to get together an email list of everybody who's involved so that we can give updates of everybody who's, you know, Upper Baptist, River Street, Baptist Hill, Pine Hill, all the residents who wish to be could be on this, just, you know, and useful. And, yeah, and then every time there's an update, we could, you know, we could send out information to everybody, that's just to keep idea. everybody in the loop. I think that's a good idea. I'll start pulling yeah, it together, and if people yeah. want to email me with addresses of people who want to be on that, I'm, you know. But, and, and I agree that we need to have, like, a, a next step identified. Yeah, like, like a game well, plan. Next steps are to find the engineers or agencies to provide them, <laughs> yeah. and two, find the money to pay for them, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. And the money's either coming from some state or federal agency or someplace else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And EWP, um, the town is required to have a 25% match. So, just to put that out there. One of the things I, I mentioned later in my town administrator report is that um, I would like to see us push to, because once you sign a contract with EWP, which we're nowhere near yet, but once you sign that, any of the monies you've expended prior to the signing of that contract do not count as match which doesn't seem fair when you're in an emergency situation and the town had to spend the money to make roads safe and passable, but then you, you, know, then you sign the contract to get help. And you, so that's something that I'm trying to push forward and see if there's any way we could get that to rule to be changed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, 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 it's, it's, it's the, it, this, is a, this is a sticky wicket. It's a big problem. The town, uh, structurally, is not well equipped for big problems. Um, but ignoring this, it, this just gets worse. It gets worse. And if it happen, if it can happen 
once, twice, if it can happen for that month, it's gonna happen again. And, um, you know, and I, I personally, uh, personally have paid for two electric panels in July. Um, and I, I don't wanna pay for a third one anytime soon. And that's just the, the, the tip of my personal damages. And did, we're all, um, yeah, like we gotta do something about this. We do. So, and I've been saying that since July 22nd. Next steps, find um, engineers, find money. Yep. Yes. Yep. So in finding the money side of things, that before you, the, uh, I know that the, um, for like the swimming pool, for example, you have to go to the, uh, the CPA group, et cetera, et cetera. But all those little projects can be packaged quite cleverly and brought to different types of funders in ways, but they, they can't be done as separate, 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 separate. You have to kind of keep running sheets of how different things. If there's two town culverts that you're gonna to promise to use to fix the, the, uh, the pool, and the pool becomes a recreation priority of, you know, personally I think houses are more important than the pool, but not everybody would agree with that. Um, but, um, like, the relationship of the different projects that are a part of ecological change that require a different infrastructure for stormwater management, don't think of them as all separate. Think of them as, as related, and if you already have a GoFundMe match that can be matched by the town, go to Western Massachusetts, but again, the private definition of the Conway pool in philanthropy would affect that particular thing, that particular project, I think, in, in a philanthropic environment. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other, other ways that there aren't donors that want to maintain the heritage landscape and economy related to it of the region that are interested in building climate resilience. They may, they're not going to pay for culverts, but they might help pay for design and strategy planning in towns of less than 3,000. It's very hard to, I, I find the municipal definition of Conway, given its infrastructure and tax base, kind of like an overstatement. It's almost hyperbole. It's a village which is not the same as in municipal. I know that it is in definitions in law, but it strikes me as inadequate to the situation. Yeah, I agree with that. Sure. Yeah, um, all, the, all the assistance that you can, all the knowledge that you have, we, we just we really appreciate it, and all the help that you can give. I think going for coordination, like even going to, like I wonder if that um, there's another major center at the university, it's out of the president's office and it's in the area that's in Hadley. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, it's not where the Donahue from? Yeah. Does the Don Donahue, whatever it is. They might have, they might have a, a project that's um, rural, rural uh, the climate. Institute. The Donahue Institute might have a project or a person interested in rural management of serious uh, climate change resilience. That's not farmer directed. Okay. Well, these are all things too we can share on that big email list. Yeah. You know. But I mean, we gotta, um, you know, the, the, the rainy season, the hurricane season is approaching. It's here. It's, it's here. The rainy season is like, normally it, that's the fall. That's September and October are usually the rainiest months. <coughs> Um, just, uh, you know, I, I feel a sense of urgency for this. I am trying to share that sense with everybody else. I, um, whatever we can do, whatever we can do, there's, there's some areas of the town that, have, that we know are going to get some help. We know that e, the EWP is going to help, is going to help the Shelburne Falls Road. Um, I well, think we don't know anything yet. Right. <laughs> they vindicate that. And, and yeah. what's that acronym? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Emergency Wetlands yeah. Preparedness, um, I think, is what it is. Somebody contact yeah. them. And the program. And um, is it out of USDA? Yeah, it's USDA and then NRCS. So, yeah. 
natural resources and conservation. Yeah. Um, I presume you've thought of this already, but um, the CPA fund does is allowed to spend money on historic preservation and protection. And a lot of the homes in question in the area we're talking about are historic homes. We have to find the actual historic district definition. Well, I don't it, remember it's where. downtown historic district, but, but we're not talking about those. Oh, okay. okay. I'm just talking about individual properties up there. Are. So that's but that. that's another example of where there's a long, like, if it hasn't, there are pluses and minuses about being in a historic conservation or a historic district. But if you are, that brings a whole set of resources into the area. Yeah, but we aren't. We're yeah. not. Yeah. And we're not. I, I know that we're not uh, now. We're not now, but there's a historic commission in the town, and in the long-term solution to these processes, if you, if you, if that's ignited, if it's actually engaged, then there's all you become eligible for different kinds of state resources and even Fed resources that are related to that type of funding. I know it doesn't, it's not there now, but that's part of identifying short-term and long-term. Uh, solutions. Right, so you're saying long term, long if there were a district up there when the next huge, uh, some future yeah. hurricane hits, there might it could be, be really, it, yeah, because it's not going to be like there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah. But short term, the CPA might theoretically. Can I say one, Mr. Home. Chair, can yeah. I say one more thing? And sure. from, yeah. I, I think it'll be the last thing I'm going to say. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I know that there's. It sounds like there's a large, um, a larger problem in Conway, but I would encourage you all to make this in small bites. And the first thing is, who are the people that flooded, that lost their boilers, their electric systems? Those are health and safety issues. Okay, I, I, I do electrical loss, fire loss stuff. That's a safety issue. Who are those people? Are those people damaged because of the same, are they in the same area? Then let's focus on that. Is there any possibility that those people who have that damage in the same area have the same, is it the same water source that we're dealing? Then let's deal with that area of the, of the water system, the, what are we calling it, the sewer drain. It's not a sewer drain, it's the storm water drains. Let's deal with that. It's inadequate. You, there's certain things that can be done right now to prevent that harm. And some of those were in my letter. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah. yeah, that's... Those people that were hurt the worst um, need the most help. By definition, and I would agree that you know if you're going to prioritize anything in town, the property, people's homes, and their safety has to come before the town recreational area. Yeah, you know, and, and even resources. I know what it's like to be in a small town and running things. That you, it's only so many bodies that are doing work. If you're prioritizing anything, it's got to be on, on these people's homes. And you know, we 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 really appreciate we Donna and myself. I really appreciate you putting us on the agenda so soon. Thank you very much for bringing this forward so quickly. But we really do want to encourage you to continue to move as quickly as you have so far as it relates to this immediate problem. And you know, we are we are a small village, masquerading as a town. Uh, and you're, this is it. This is the town government. We're it. Um, we need help. We need help at all levels. Uh, these, this is, you know, help. Uh, that's I, that's I, what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying for a while. But uh, you know, and and people have come and gone. Cause people have come and gone. You, um, I just want to say that, that what little support that we're able to provide to the Conway pool right now, that shouldn't be any reflection of like, that, that that's a priority more so than the houses on Baptist Hill. That's, 
there are a lot of nuances to these particular funds and how and where we can expend the money. Yeah. So we're able to give that money. To, we, we couldn't give $6,000 to remedy any situation on Baptist Hill right now. We actually can, as a town, provide that money to the common pool. But I don't want to. I, I, I don't want that to suggest that like we're minimizing the situation on Baptist Hill um, and prioritizing yeah. like a town recreational area. And That's I'll not just, the case at all. I'll just follow up what you said just to clarify, to even just, just to clarify that even a little bit more. The select board meets as the board of trustees and administers a series of town trusts, which are mostly estates that people, especially back in between Civil War and World War One, was quite the fashion to leave money to the town and leave it in a trust. And Very there's many, specific guidelines there's, there's as many, far as many how different you can spend trusts. Um, and um, the, the ones that were that that, were, that the swimming pool was eligible for a specific trust for the rec, for recreational facilities, recreational appurtenances, and word, wordage like that from the 1800s. And so that is what we made available to them during this meeting. And it, it is limited to those types of things. We used it. To, we used more of that like last year. We built for new playground toys. It's kind of that. That's what they got. So it was not, they weren't taken from us and we couldn't, we can't take from them. So that's, that's, that is it. Um, yeah, yeah, there is, yeah, I, I think George said it, said it well. George identified what the next steps have to be and uh, <laughs> get an engineer and plan. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's what we have to do. Yeah. And like soon, tomorrow. Tomorrow would be a good day to start. Let me get on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop what you're doing. Then do this. Um, so that's. And we'll 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 we meet every two weeks. <laughs> this is this is a permanent agenda item, and um, for as long as I'm chair, and until everybody is healed, this item on our unfinished business is going to remain on our agenda and um, and this is because this was the worst natural disaster in our 260 year history as if dollar value means anything um, and it is uh, it is staggering to me the lack of help that we've gotten from our state government so far except for the DOT except for the DOT <laughs> So we and, need the and engineers just, to come out. Just, and, you know, and for, for those of you that do not know, and I'll talk about this right now, because um, the, the Massachusetts Emer the, um, MEMA, Massachusetts Emergency Management Association, Friday night decided that they were not going to recommend to the FEMA, to the federal government, that a disaster be declared for Conway or for the July storms for Western Mass. Um, and they had a long list of reasons which were appallingly inadequate and um, so you know that the the director of that MEMA um, uh, what was her name are you gonna share her cell phone number I should <laughs> I should dox her no um, Dawn Brantley Dawn Brantley um, put put together a, a, an email we, we we did not get recommended because they took although although the town the area qualified numerically almost um, th that's not the only criteria and had they gone back to the towns and saying do you have anything more since then we would have answered yes because uh, Estimates that we got for road repairs that were initially two hundred thousand turned out to be four hundred thousand. Um, so can you appeal that? So, um, yeah, you, I, I don't know. I don't know. One of the things that I am doing though is calling for her resignation and um, uh, calling for her to be terminated by the governor. That the rationale that she set forth w w w were so inadequate. She took our numbers and autumn and said. There's a historical, a historical average that even though even though you have the numbers that you have because because uh, FEMA historically only gives half of that number, we're gonna we're just gonna count half of what you're telling us. So, so we got penalized for being honest. 
We got penalized for saying, okay, we, we, we want receipts before we put numbers up on the board. And, um, so and, and without a discussion with... You can, you can appeal it. Um, I would think. But we'll be talking with Deerfield and... Because yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. So, so, for the, example, the, you asked for numbers. I didn't give you any of the numbers of the repair work that, that has been done in my house related to what, what took place. Then another, there's plenty of weather data that will tell you that it, you should not be, and there's quite a rigorous debate, that you don't count that as one. Like I noticed that, that one of the things that they were talking about was, the, they said it was that the, it's one storm, one day. No, it was a series of storms that, that created the problem, not because it's tail water. So That's Lori right. will help you with the appeal. <laughs> and, and, and Mima and made a specific- He'll help you with the headline. Mima made a specific- <laughs> Was that a government <laughs> bureaucrat before? And Mima made a specific finding. She made a specific finding in her denial letter that that the damages that Conway suffered are within Conway's ability to pay for. And, well, within um, state and municipal. And, so that which yeah. made me think, well, great, you said yeah. that the states it's, it's, able to. It is so offensive. It is so offensive to actually put that in writing and say that this is why you're not getting help. Um, and, and, and the mission of MEMA has to be to help people. It can't be to find reasons not to help people. It's just, this is nuts. It's just horrible. Have, have you guys reached out to your state rep in Conway about that yet? <laughs> Many oh. times. Well, not about this. They, but we've been, but to be honest, everybody was pretty much expecting this outcome um, or anticipating we would not we would not make the FEMA threshold. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons why, but... It um, wasn't a big surprise. But yes, we're definitely in constant communication with our... Because the state always lets us down in so many ways. Like I say, every town meeting, they are an unreliable partner. Um, except for MassDOT, you're awesome, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, we're we, trying. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so, um, all right. Uh, Mary Parker, did you have anything you, that you wanted to add to your, to Field Hill? No, you're just, close to me. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I will say this, I think. If I could, Veronique, uh, to address the screwy water that we talked about earlier this year, that even with the storm did more damage to Jen's property. Fields Hill, of course, washed out my property. Um, she took steps <coughs> in Venezuela oh. to redirect the water. Okay. Um, since it is the town culprit emptying onto her property, but at this point, after the storms, the three storms, it became just absolutely you know, beyond what anybody should have to endure. So um, when the contractor came to clean our property up, take the stones, well, virtually take Fields Hill off pastures, she had him come in through that swale. So it'll be interesting once the culverts on the Waitley Road are cleaned out and the ditch is cleaned and the road repaired, how it how it'll function. Yeah. But that's what we <coughs> ended up doing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me Um Yeah, uh Jimmy you hear about the street lights. Uh you weren't here at six o'clock when we um, tabled it until two weeks because this the other select board was really, member was really interested in it. But there is some information that we got from Selmer and from it, and you probably know all about that. Um, and Just the story I saw on the paper, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah but we've been communicating with them and sort of liked their direction of solution to some of that stuff. And Can we share that with Jim? Yeah. All right, um, so... I did bring um, some brochures from the International Dark Sky Association. Should I, if anyone yeah. would like, oh, I can yeah. pass yeah. that out. Yeah. 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 
I'm ready, and then I can just go. <laughs> Skies are sometimes dark in certain parts of the world. <laughs> yeah. Solutions. Just have tree limbs fall and just knock the thing out. That's yeah, just like, well. All I have to do is two things. Engineers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> easy. Yeah, easy. <laughs> easy. 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 Um, so the last item from mail on the, on the agenda to deal with is the letter from Frontier from the Frontier Superintendent. Um, so this is. Article three from this past town meeting, we appropriate eighty-two thousand for capital expenses to the grammar school. Um, Forty-five thousand of that was for mini splits for the HVAC project, and it's been a it's been a multi-year project to put mini splits to have air conditioning and heating in every room, especially air conditioning, especially months of June and September, um, and. Uh, in, so they, they spent the 45000 that was allocated, and in doing so, they got a 17000 rebate from Eversource. And they put that money into more mini-splits, which is because it's part of a four-year, five-year, six-year plan. And, um, and so two more units were installed this summer, they, so they took off like a whole year from that plan. And now there's only one or two more rooms left. Um, the Conway Town Accountant, um, uh, and, and I met with him, and he felt that he felt that 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 initial invoice from the contractor, because it did not include the words any rebates should be applied to more uh, mini splits, because it did not include that clause. Then the, the initial that then that invoice was the appropriation from town meeting, and that the only solution is to have the money that was used to pay for those mini splits instead be returned to the town's general fund and closed out against free cash, and um, and 
you know, Darius' letter says that, you know, they, they spoke with their auditor. They tech, the auditor technically agrees with our accountant. However, there is some gray area because it's a continuation of the same project and essentially an in-out transaction. And that there are other towns, including the three other towns that are part of Frontier, um, where the select board voted to allow their district to use the rebate funds to continue a project without having to re return the funds to the town. So um, in, in doing so, the district was able to move forward with the project and not have to wait until the next town meeting to request use of the funds. So what, that, what the school is asking is that we approve the use of that $17,000 rebate to pay for the installation of the heat pump mini splits, which was, which was our plan all along, um, which is what I would like to do. The problem is that the accountant, town accountant, um, believes that that is unlawful. So um, we agreed to expend 82000 Right. For capital expenses, and 45000 right. of that was for the mini splits for all these different rooms. It was, so, but I they didn't 40, actually spend 45000 They spent 45000 minus 17000 They spent 45000 in, in spending that. They got, we qualified for a 17000 rebate. Okay. So, um, what is our account, the accounts worried that we're going to get audited and this is going to be an, Im this is not. Yeah, he's, I, I mean, he's the one who caught it and basically it was because the rebate was going to be applied to school choice, I believe. That was really where it was. That's the way it was classified in the yeah. records that it was income from school choice. And, he had, and he had a, okay. he's like, yeah. that's sketchy. It's um, not. But, and, and, and just so you're aware, I have not run this past because this just came in this past town council either. So I don't know if that's something you want to do before you make a decision on it. Are, we, are we the only town that's that's having this issue? Uh, yes. <laughs> They're and like, oh, just give like, me I, 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 I don't want to create, the, the, account, the accountant is, do, is, we have a good accountant. I know, he's great, yeah. And, 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 but um, Darius is great too. So. Exactly, exactly. And and this is something that because of the, the nature of this, it would be really nice to avoid having to bring this up at town meeting, especially um, since we already technically agreed uh, to, to do spend this. The money. And this is our plan, and this was like done in our direction. So this is um, really just like a paperwork classification. They snafu. Just, they're just they classified the expense in a exactly. Well, I guess technically, and I don't know if this could have worked, but. What our accountant was saying was that when they made the original request, they should have taken into account the rebate, like gotten the quote that right. included the rebate. That's what I said. And they, then they should, did they know at the time that, I that don't they were going to? So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So but that, that that's, our accountant believes that the, that the solution would have been at that time to have that initial invoice refer to the rebate and say that the rebate would be used. To and I to do believe he's also spoken with, you know, um, DOR about this. So. I believe. So I would want the accountant to, or Darius. Uh, the accountant. Okay. So I I just want to be sure that we're on firm legal ground in doing that. I mean, in theory, I have concern. I have I mean, like I kind of would have a problem if we said we're going to give you eighty two thousand dollars and they were like, well, we only spent X amount on this, so we're going to use the rest of it on something else right. we didn't talk about. Right. But that's not the case here. Correct. Right. So right. this. In theory, I'm okay, but I, you know, if Mike is well, he clearly like a little <laughs> he clearly understood and said, yeah, that it's not that it doesn't make sense; it's the process that was yeah. a question. So that's why I'm saying I'd like to make sure. And the big risk is that the DOR would like do an Oops. audit and be we, like, you exactly. guys are yeah. But if he runs it by the DOR first and said, I mean, is that? I'd I'd like to, I'd like to. My, I'd like to bring this by town council, see if there's a way that we can do this. Yeah, I agree. And, I um, and, and, and Mike. I mean, and, yeah. And Mike, yeah, because, yeah. Um, because this town meeting, <laughs> as soon as we start talking about deficit spending, people's heads are going to explode. Mm -hmm. And my head's going to explode. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is just 
something we don't need, a headache that we don't need, and it's not yeah. right. It's not right for anybody to have to suffer because of our current financial misfortune um, when this was following our plan and doing what we wanted to be done. Well, the only, the only other, I mean, I realize it's not ideal, but, uh, you know, the money technically should be coming back to the town and go to free cash, closing out to free cash, I believe. Is where, yeah. So the alternative is that next town meeting, we just put in for the other mini splits. Right. I mean, it just means it's delayed. That's right. Honestly, that's the thing. And biggest. we try to explain, like, to people yeah. that what well, we approved mini splits last year, so why are we doing it again? This was supposed right. to be like. Even if we have a very simple explanation, we know that that will still be a very complicated yes discussion. Yes. Um, yeah. So can we table this until we run it by town council? I mean, in theory, I have I have no problem with it, but I just I want to be, you know, want to make sure that Mike is okay with it. I just don't think everybody thinks it's a good idea to be able to do it. I think it's just a question of legal process. Yeah. So. So let's go through the legal process. I'd be okay with, if everybody agrees it makes sense, that, you know, it should break the law. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? You have it on record. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it makes more sense, if it more, makes more sense to, for everybody concerned. I'm not, as your town administrator. Yeah, you want to be Trump's <laughs> Also, it's, it's not, no, that's I mean, true. it's not even breaking the law, but I, but I would feel more comfortable, like, just running it through the appropriate yeah. channels yeah. before we make it. But it, it is a shame. It is a shame to actually have to, if we have to put this on the town meeting warrant, bring it to areas to talk about it and have to deal with the whole thing at town meeting. We don't know that yet. So. When it's just yeah. a strictly a paperwork, yeah. oh, your invoice didn't have this one sentence that it needed to have. That's really it. <coughs> so is that um, a, a run that by legal counsel? Yeah, we're going to run it by legal counsel. Table. Go to yeah. the table, run it by legal counsel, yeah. see if we can do something um, gotcha. without having to yeah. incur pain for everybody. Um, my name is not anticipated 48 hours. We did that for hours already. Uh, <laughs> town administrator update. Uh, Adam's getting his notary public. We're paying the $60 fee. Sweet. Adam's going to switch his work days to Saturday morning. Well. A little bit to, to, to tra sell transfer station decals. I'm not going to speed Go for it. All right. All right. Um, Jan Varnick finalized on online payment system, online application to the new transfer station vehicle decals, which will be begin selling this Friday. Mass Dot, who we previously acknowledged, there how awesome they are, is agreeing to rebuild four federally assisted roads for Conway. Main Poland, North Poland, South Ashfield, and Williamsburg roads, is, which is just awesome. Main Poland is, is, such, is so, so helpful. North Poland, too. Um, uh, Ronnie went to the Natural Roots Farm Tour with Jim McGovern, spoke about the EWP the, um, program. The, yeah, yeah. Um, John Holy, the dairy farmer across from, right up from Barbell's Ferry Bridge. You know, it's, it, you don't think about it when they're doing something like this, but all of his hay fields are on the other side, are on the Shelburne side of that bridge. And um, when you think about how he's got to drive tractors back and forth and all that, um, and now he's got to go through Shelburne Falls to get there. Uh, yeah. That's just brutal. And, but, you know, a good reason to get on DOT much as we love them, get on them early and often to hurry it up. So are we, I, I told you, I saw there was something that the Shelburne Falls chair, or select board chair put out that I can't find now, um, about how it was gonna be incumbent upon the two towns to work together to find funding, engineering. I have not communicated with them yet about this, other than their highway person, yeah. so. No, it was, I'm gonna see. find it um, and send it to you, because I was like, oh, okay. Thanks. That's good to know. <laughs> Well, that was my yeah. update. Okay. <laughs> good, good update. Good update. Um, and, and so we, the next meeting is September 11th. Oh, wait, can we just, I just, in, for mail, I just want to acknowledge that we did have a, a question that came in about why the town, could the town purchase the pool from the Conway Swimming 
School Incorporated. Did you see that email? It does not sound familiar. Oh, oh, he just sent it just to just to the three select board members. Okay. Um, I imagine you're all aware of the emergency fundraiser for the Conway Pool. I was curious why one of the main municipal recreation features in the town is managed by a private entity. Perhaps a disaster recovery from the summer's rain suggests that the pool should be part of the responsibilities of the town and not reliant on donations and fundraisers. Would it be possible for the town to purchase the pool from Conway Community Swimming Pool Incorporated? And, and I talked about that in my meeting with Craig Warner and yeah. the, because there is funding that is available to... It works both ways. There's funding I, yeah. that's available to private organizations that's not available, and there's funding that's available to the town that's not. But in this particular instance, if it were a town recreational facility, then the town highway department could do the work instead of having to raise money for it. Although, you'd have to pay for that work and somehow anyway, right. but it would be less than, pro certainly less than paying it, because it, really the work is just basically exactly what Ron Sweet does very well, which is run excavating equipment. Um, and yeah, I just want to acknowledge that, that and people are wondering this, and there is, and we don't have to go into it now, but there's a we, long history of the Conway Swim Pool, and there's a reason that it's private property and not well, by the town. Well, and, and, and that those reasons are uh, <laughs> that that if it is town property, the law would require us to have bathrooms and lifeguards. And insurance beyond. What? And um, so the, the, the lifeguard thing adds up really quickly, mm -hmm. and um, the bathroom thing, of course, is money to build, lots of money to build, design, all that stuff, and uh, and uh, maintain every year. So what we would save in, I mean, I thought about this too, what we would save in, uh, you know, having the, the highway department do work there, we would spend more than that, I, th I don't know, I haven't done a formal cost-benefit analysis, but it doesn't strike me as a super attractive yeah, thing no, for I mean, anybody. It's, it's a, just given the yeah. history of the pool, there's yeah. a, I just want to acknowledge that. <laughs> there's a great idea, but there are very good reasons why yeah. that is not town property, and that's private property. So the next meeting is September 11th. Um, then we have the last forum, the last transfer station forum is the 14th. At what time? I don't remember. I think five, it was like 5.30. 30 in this room. So yeah, in, and the 14th is a... <laughs> Thursday. Maybe we should sell stickers there. Ooh. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you could sell, sell ex, I could sell we some can. extra no, stickers. No, I'll sell some. The way it's set up on our Google oh, spreadsheets and everything. Yeah, right. gonna, yeah. Never mind. Unfortunately. But yeah, so. Um, it's at 6 o'clock. Just look it up. All right. On the 14th. So with that, I'll make a motion to adjourn until, until the 11th. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everybody.